most important part in the success of any job or repair or installation is the preparation. Right now I'm going to go over the tools that you need to use uh, when using making any repair, but particularly when using red epoxy, high sides two part um, epoxy. The first thing we're going to use a heat gun, an industrial heat gun. Um, we are going to use a Wagner. Uh, because it gets to 300 degrees, uh, it's the product of choice by me and, and a lot of professionals uh, where you can use it in places where you can't use a flame. We're also going to prepare our material with a Master Cool hydraulic swedge tool. And then we're going to clean the surface with 60 grit sandpaper uh, that you can get from High Side Chemical or any High Side Chemical distributor. The most important thing is going to be that you have a clean surface. Uh, anytime you're going to use solder or any adhesion, uh, you want to be sure and get a good clean surface, no oils, uh, no foreign material on your joint. Uh, we're going to do the same thing inside on the aluminum fitting. And today we're going to put together copper and aluminum just because it's one of the becoming one of the more common joints and one of the most difficult joints uh, to make in the uh, real world. I'm going to close off our Master Cool Swedge tool. Oop. And get a couple good squeezes just to be sure we have the proper fit. And we're going to test our fit. And that's exactly what we're looking for right there. Okay? So whenever you uh, get your red epoxy kit, there are a couple of items you're going to need. One is a clean uh, mixing um, at least holder uh, dish, something like that, that is disposable. So we're going to use this aluminum uh, pan. Also we're going to use a wooden spatula with no foreign material on it uh, to mix the two parts, the red and the white, uh, for red epoxy. When you open red epoxy, it's going to be sealed at the top and you'll have two half ounce containers inside red epoxy. One will be your white and one will be your red. You're going to mix these equally 50-50 in the dish. Alright, so now we're going to take the red epoxy red, open it up, and squeeze some into the pan. That's more than enough for the joint that we're going to make. We're going to do the same thing with the clear or the white. And what we're aiming to do is get approximately 50-50. Uh, the next step is to take our spatula, our clean spatula, and mix the two together. And you're going to get a bright, bright red material with a nice, thick consistency. Another great thing about using red epoxy is you have a 12 hours of pot time to work with this material. If you're not using heat, it's very simple to just apply this product and in 24 hours it will cure on its own. That's the consistency and color that you're looking for. Alright, so we've got the two parts mixed and after about 10 minutes the reaction is already starting to take place. The good news is we have four hours of pot time to work with this material um, so there's no real rush. Take your time. We've already prepared our joint very well and now we're going to take the spatula and spread the red epoxy around that joint. And what we're trying to do is create a seal here. Now keeping in mind that as we heat this material it's going to become more liquidous and run around to the bottom. And we'll show you as that happens. Again, it doesn't take a whole lot of red epoxy to make a good joint. Just be, good. be sure you've got good even coverage all the way and you want to leave a little bit more on top. Uh, so when it runs around, you'll be in good shape there. Okay. Anyway, as you can see, it's very easy and it's very workable. Now, we could stop right here. In 24 to 72 hours, depending on your temperature and humidity, it would cure, and it would cure a dark, rich red color. It would not change colors. This material is actually made to change colors under heat as it's curing, and that's what we're going to de demonstrate next.